In this video, we're going to look at congruent or congruent triangles. Two triangles are said to be congruent if they're identical. That is, they're the same shape and the same size. In a previous video, we looked at similar triangles. Similar triangles with the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. For two triangles to be congruent, we need three of the elements of each triangle to be the same. In this video, we're going to look at four different ways that we can test if two triangles are congruent. The easiest one and the most intuitive one is side, side, side. So our three elements are equal sides. So the corresponding side lengths are the same. We've got this one equal to this one, this one equal to the one over here, and then finally these two equal. So this now is said to be side, 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 or if you like, S, S, S. The next one is right angle hypotenuse side. So if we have a right angle triangle, we can have now the right angle of 90 degrees being the same, the hypotenuse and one of the shorter sides. So R, H, S, right angle hypotenuse side. If you like, this is a simple variation of side, 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 if you look at it using Pythagoras. So that's two done, side, 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 and right angle hypotenuse side. The next one we've got is side angle side. And we're talking here about the enclosed angle. So we've got one side, which we'll put just here. With that one, we've got now the enclosed angle, which is going to be equal. And then we have the other side. So this is said to be side angle side. For the fourth one, there are two variations of it. If we look at the first one, this is going to be angle side angle. So if we put on an angle, we can have the angle like so, we will have one side and then another angle that's the same. So we can place that on like so, and we can say that these are congruent or identical. If you can imagine now fixing these two angles in place and one side length, we can see now that this triangle isn't going to change. So once we have a fixed length and two angles that are the same, we can now say that these are identical by angle, side, angle. Due to the nature of a triangle, if we've got two known angles, then we've actually got three known angles. So for example, if this one was 90 and this one was, say, 70, then we know what the last one is going to be. And as a result of that now, a different branch off of this one is going to be angle, angle, side. So we've got angle, angle, side. So in this particular case, we would have now the angle just here, which I'll show with the three lines. Let's put that on. So we've got now the angle just here. We've got the one that we had before, and then we can put on now one side length. So if we've got now two pairs of corresponding angles and then a corresponding pair of sides, we can say that angle, angle, side is a proof for congruency. These are identical. So let's just go over those and we will look at each one. Side, side, side. The most intuitive one. So each side is the same length. The right angle hypotenuse side. So we've got a right angle of a right angle triangle and then the hypotenuse and one shorter side. I could have chosen that one. The next one is side angle side. So we've got one side, we've got the enclosed angle and then the side now, the other side of the angle. Angle side angle. So we've got now two corresponding pairs of angles and then one side and as a result of knowing two angles we can tell what the third one is and we can say angle angle side. So we bunch the last two together but in general there's four different ways of proving congruency. What we're now going to look at are two methods that don't prove congruency and we have to be careful with them. Often in this topic, it's easier thinking what doesn't prove congruency rather than remembering what does. And the first one that doesn't is angle, angle, angle. So angle, angle, angle is going to now have three angles that are the same. So we've got three pairs of corresponding angles. So we've got an angle there, an angle there, and then finally this one just here. And the reason this doesn't now is because we could enlarge this triangle. So if I consider enlarging this one, we would have now the same size angles. Obviously, they're not going to fit, but we've got now similar triangles. 
angle, angle, angle is a proof of similarity rather than congruency. So just be careful on that particular one and let's put these back in place. This is not now a test for these to be congruent. It just shows that they are similar. The next one we need to be careful with, and often you'll hear this being said as don't be an ass or ass if you're from the UK. If we consider now this angle right here, so we're going to have angle here and one side. Now what I could do is the following, and let's just put this on, I'll put it in a different colour. We might have now this side length like so, and we would say that we've got the side length which is going to be the same. What I'm going to do here is draw two different triangles, and you might have recognised this from the ambiguous case of the sine rule. So if I bent this round this way, what we've got here is a completely different triangle, and this really will just be a sketch. We've got this, we've got now these two. Yet if I did a different configuration of this, with the same side lengths, we might have a triangle that's going out the other way. So it looks like that. And you can see quite clearly that those are two different triangles. Yet the angle is the same, and we've got two corresponding sides. So if you want to think in your head, don't be an ass. This is not now a test or proof for congruency. So we've got angle, 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 which isn't. And then the last one, which is angle, side, side. So there's a brief intro. What we're now going to do is look at some slightly harder questions using now the test for congruency. So in the first one, it says A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. We need to prove that triangles A, B, D, so this is A, B, D just here, and B, C, D, which is just here, are congruent. Depending on which course you do will determine how much you need to put into this. Most courses in the UK don't require an awful lot at a lower level. So let's start off with a basic proof of this. The first thing we can say now is that side AB will be equal to side DC. And we can write that these are opposite, so opposite sides, and we'll just drop this, of the parallelogram. So writing it to our parallelogram, parallelogram, just write that there. So we can say now that these two sides are the same. AB is equal to DC. Again, different terminology and notation is used in different courses. The next thing that we can say is that AD will be equal to BC for exactly the same reasons. We've got now opposite sides of a parallelogram. So this length must be the same as this one. This one must be the same as this one. If we now consider BD, BD is common to both, or it's shared by both triangles. So we can say that BD is common, and we'll write this out, common to both. What we have here is a case of side, side, side. We can write, hence now, triangle, and using the notation for triangle, we've got triangle ABD is congruent to, and just jotted it down, is congruent to triangle BCD. And we would write now side, side, side. We've got three equal sides. If you just consider what we've got here, we've got this one, which is AB, and that will be the same length now, if it's in the parallelogram, as DC. So that's one side. So those corresponding sides are equal. This one right here, AD and BC are equal, and we can say that the third one now they share, which is BD, that is common to both. So by side, 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 these are congruent. So that's a nice straightforward example. Let's have a look at another one. AB and CD are parallel, and AB is equal to CD. So here's AB and here is CD, or DC. The lines AC, which is this one just here, and BD intersect at E. We need to prove that triangles ABE, which is this one, and CDE, which is the lower one, are congruent. We've got a different method that we could use to show this. There's a couple of different approaches. One that we could say now, and we'll just draw this up. Let's just show what we've got here. 
this is going to be a parallel line. So if we just consider now, this is going to be a parallel line with this one right here, and we've got a transversal. The transversal is just here, or if you like, there's another transversal there. So what we can say here now is that angle EAB, so if we consider angle EAB, that's going to be this one just here. So we can say angle EAB will be equal now to angle DEC. So let's just check that one. Angle, sorry, angle ECD. So we've got now ECD. So ECD is this one just here. So let's write that there. That will now be the same as ECD. And I'll just draw those on. So do check that you're writing these down correctly. And let's just look at that. So this angle right here, EAB, is going to be the same as this one right here. These are alternate angles, and we will state that one. So that's ECD. So let's go ahead and write that. We can say alternate. And generally now, you're not allowed in exams to write Z angles. I'll put Z angles for completeness, um, but do be aware that some exam boards don't allow them. Okay, let's look at another one. We can save it angle, and let's go for A, and on this one, we will go for now A, B, E. So let's do angle A, B, E. We could do angle A, B, E, and look now at using the angle side angle, or we could use now the angle E, A, B, and show that that's opposite to angle D, E, C. So I'll do it both ways. Let's do now angle E, A, B. So uh, e, sorry, AEB, angle AEB, which is this one just here, will be equal now to angle, and let's write this down, DEC. So angle DEC is equal to angle AEB, which is going to be this one just here. These are opposite angles. So we can write down now that these are opposite. So let's go ahead and do that. So opposite angles. So let's just jot that down. Opposite angles right there. Now, we're left with one last thing to show. We've got now this statement here that AB is equal now to CD. So if we just consider what we've got here, AB is equal to CD, we can write that down. So AB is equal to CD or DC, if you like. Let's write that down. And that's given. So what we have here is a case of having two angles on one side. So what we can say then, hence... And uh, the triangle now A, and we'll put these on triangle ABE, let's write that, triangle ABE will now be congruent, is congruent to, I'm just writing this in, congruent to triangle CDE. And that's now by angle, angle, side. So we've got angle, angle, side. So I've shown that two of these angles are equal, and let's just put that on, let's just get this up here. We're looking now at this. We're saying that this one here is going to be the same as this one just here, and then we've got two given angles. So it's congruent by angle, angle side. As you can see with this one, we could have gone a different approach, and I nearly did go a different approach by considering now the angle just here, and we'll just put this on now. We can see that this angle here and this one are going to also be equal. So we could have said angle A, B, E is equal to angle E, D, C. So angle E, D, C. We went, then would have shown uh, the other one just here, but these two are alternate angles. The first one I showed, angle E, A, B is equal to angle E, C, D. And then we've got now that A, B is equal to D, C, which we need to state is given and then you can see in this particular case what we've got here, and let's just uh, scribble over this. We've got now these two angles are going to be the same. So we've shown those two angles, and then we've got this side length just here. And this is going to be a case, and we would say, hence now, uh, the triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDE, but this time we're using now angle side angle. So I've used a different approach now instead of using angle, angle, side to show that they're congruent. So that's one in context. Um, be careful, as you see, when I'm writing down the angles, I often get them uh, slightly muddled up. Do be, uh, do be careful of that. But hopefully you can see now different ways of attacking these problems. So let's quickly run over those uh, just to finish off. Side, side, side is a proof for congruency. Right angle, hypotenuse, side is. 
side angle side with the enclosed angle, angle side angle, and angle angle side. Those that are not angle angle angle, which is now a test for similarity. And finally, angle side side is not a proof of congruency.